So joining us to talk through all of this is Neil Dixon, who is the Chief Executive of the NHS Confederation and in our London newsroom this morning, former junior doctor Adam Kerr, who now writes about the uh, NHS. Thank you both for joining us. Um, let me start with you, Neil. Just on these numbers, obviously there's the figures out this morning saying that it would cost, it would take household taxes to rise by a grand and a half just to maintain the level of NH service we have now. If we want to improve it, it would be £2,000 for every household. That's a lot of money. How, how has this been worked out? Well, I think the first thing to say is that this is a bit of a wake-up call for all of us about what we're going to face over the next 15 years or so. What this report does is simply ask us to go back to the level of funding we had for the first 60 years over that time, which is roughly 4% additional spending on top of inflation each year going forward. The numbers seem big because of course we're talking about by 2033. Mm. The assumption is that we will be all better off by that time so people will have more to be able to contribute. But the underlying question is a really serious one and it's a big and tough choice for us all. If we want to maintain and actually make this service even better than it is now, we are going to have to pay for it. And there's no, there is no way of getting around that. We, in the past we've tended to cut and lots of other bits of public spending, they seem, according to the report, to have gone as far as we can take them. So we probably are, as a society, going to have to spend more. But we need to have a wider debate about it, and we need a long t longer term funding settlement, not this, we tend yeah. at the moment to bail it out sort of year by year. And we've been urging the government to think about a longer term settlement. I'm really pleased both the Health Secretary and the Prime Minister have said they will go for a longer term settlement. What we need now is a kind of wider debate, I think, involving the public and also involving the doctors and nurses and managers, people who run the service, about what we can do for the money that's going to be invested. Mm. Neil, can I ask you the or what question? So you talked about this £2,000 per household figure by 2033. Now, if that isn't what we have, what is the health service going to look like? So I, I, I wouldn't go on the £2,000 figure for the simple reason that that's just one way if you put it all into uh, a particular form of tax and so forth. There may be all sorts of other ways in which it can be done, and that's the 2033 figure. But the honest question is, if we want money over, say, the next five years, we are going to have to look at additional taxation, or if the government wants to borrow more, there's a big question over that. So there are all sorts of different but alternatives. In a way, my question is, in the absence of that, in the absence of additional funding coming from elsewhere, what does the NHS service look, look like? Who, who's going to bear the brunt of what it can't do? I think it, we're going to enter a period of managed decline, frankly, and that, the, the danger is that we're no longer to treat, able to treat people as quickly as we are. More people don't get access, not just to health, but to social care. That and at the moment, there are hundreds of thousands of elderly people who don't qualify for state social care and who really can't afford to get the care that they need. So increasingly, I think we'll have a system, if we don't invest in it, that where the hospitals get even hotter than they are now, and that is a terrible problem already, and we get community services that are not built up to be able to prevent people from going into the hospital in the first place. So in answer to your question, I think the key groups that will suffer will be a lot of those over 85. So we're going to see almost a doubling in the number of people over 85 over the next 15 to 20 years. They will be big sufferers. We will not have the services in place, particularly to stop them going in and out of hospital as we are seeing at the moment. Uh, let's bring um, Adam Kerr in as well on this. Uh, former junior doctor now writes about the NHS. Um, I mean, Adam, you were nodding along there listening to Neil, but you know, give us the reality of what it's like when you are a doctor working under the, the limited funds that we've, we've had. Well, the NHS has never been a system that's been totally flush, but in the last decade or so, an already tight system has become stretched to breaking point really and we're 40,000 nurses short, 10,000 doctors and it's good we're now having the grown up conversation that says we either need to put more money into the NHS or expect less from it and hopefully we can find the money. Do you think taxation is a good idea? It has to come from somewhere, um, that's not my department, you know, we can spend a billion pounds to bribe the DUP or 200 billion to build nuclear submarines. We can find the money, we're a rich country, we're spending less proportionately than a lot of our European neighbours and all we want to do is get back to 
an even kill where we were a decade ago in terms of in terms of the funding we had. Mm. Neil, there, there is two. There's kind of on parallel. There's two conversations. One that you're, you're doing through your calculations about what the realities are, what what treatments can be offered for what price. In a way, the next question is the politics of this. You know, who who is going to be the political party that presents to the nation? You have to pay more tax if you want it like this. That's that's the reality, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's one thing coming up with the yeah. numbers. No, it's you, another thing actually making it happen. You're right. And the reason we commissioned this report was, and to get the Institute of Fiscal Studies and the Health Foundation, who are very respected organisations, to do it, was to try and provide some objective evidence to help the politicians have that conversation. Now, I think a lot of people, including those within government, recognise the difficulty that lies ahead and the fact that we have had a really difficult period, as Adam says, over the last 10 years. If we, if we go on like this, we will see more and more examples where individuals are not getting the care and support that they need. So we all have to have this conversation. And to make the point, because some would say, oh, it's the NHS, it's unaffordable, as if it's something to do with the NHS. This is the same conversation happening in other countries. Indeed, in countries like Germany, we are simply asking that the amount we pay out of our gross domestic product, the amount of our wealth that we want to pay by 2033, the Germans are already there. So, you know, other countries are spending, not all, but many of the countries we'd like to compare ourselves with are spending more than we are. And all we're saying is we need to do that catch up. Yeah. Adam, just, uh, I mean, it's, it's not scientific by any means. We had quite a lot of people getting in touch with the program on this story this morning. And if there was a theme, the theme was why should we have to pay more, more taxes? Uh, I, people kind of, they like the idea, and if you say to them, do you want a great NHS, the answer is yes. When it comes to, you know, would you pay more tax for it, uh, that gets a bit more complicated, doesn't it? It does. Interestingly, if you do poll people that, um, about putting a penny or two on tax for the interest, they generally say they'd be interested to. The problem is politicians are very short-termists. They don't want to uh, risk their, their seat at the next electoral cycle. Maybe we do need to think very long-term. Maybe it needs to be a big cross-parliamentary uh, decision, cross-party decision. So it's very difficult. But remember, the NHS is not buildings. The NHS is the million and a half people who work there and they're the people who are really struggling at the moment and they're the ones who need the money. Adam, we'll leave it there for now. Adam Kaye, thank you very much, former junior doctor uh, and uh, Neil Dixon, chief executive of NHS Confederation. Thank you very much. Yeah, and thank you for